Gospel of John, chapter 8, we're going to read verses 1 through 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again to the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear them. He really ignored them. And so when they continued to ask him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw the stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and rolled on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, being with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. Today I want to Use as a subject. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Turn to the person next to you and say, Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror because you need to see yourself. Yeah, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. I I, I kind of borrowed that, uh, that, that, that that subject, that title uh, from the theology of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Because so, Mike said that I'm starting with the man in the mirror. He says I'm asking him to change his ways. He says no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make the change. moment 
self-examination. Listen, if you're spending time looking outward, you'll never understand what's going on in you. All right, all right. If I'm looking at you, I can never see me. If I'm looking at her, I can never see him. If I'm looking at him, I can never see him. And so we must learn that we got to take a look in the mirror. If you're concerned about something, if there's a problem in your life, if there's a problem in your world, start with number uno. Start with yourself. That that's the beginning of solving the problem. That, that that's the beginning of making the problem better. Is that you look in that mirror and you say to yourself, what is my part in this problem? What am I doing to create this mess? What am I doing to make this person feel like this and, 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 then, and, and then they treat me this way. I know, I know, I know that's a hard, hard thing to do. Because you know we all perfect, right? <laughs> and since we're all perfect, we can't take responsibility for nothing that goes wrong. Because we're too perfect. But we must learn that we got to look in that mirror. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing, you know. Uh, I do spend a lot of time counseling. I know I'm here a lot, but I do counsel a lot, too. And what I learn is I listen. Because the truth is, counseling really is more about listening than anything else. And oftentimes, in the listening, I never hardly hear people say, what I did is what they did. What, what, what she did, what he did, what they said, what, 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 what he said, what she said. On, Never I said this, I, I did that. It's always outward. But I stopped by today to tell you that you got to start looking inward. And as I look at this text today, we find that we have some folks who really need to look in the mirror. Come on now. Let the church say, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. We need to look in the mirror. Because the mirror is the place that we find ourselves. And as we look at this text, Jesus is gathered in the temple teaching a mother to a people. He, he, he's there giving the word of God to a crowd. If you read it, you know, when you take your time to go back home and really read the whole thing, he, he was there with a whole bunch of folk. And all of a sudden, here comes the scribes and the Pharisees. They came to Jesus with some foolishness. And you know why I know it was foolishness? Because when they told Jesus, the first thing he did was stoop down and start writing in the dirt. It was really a subtle way of him, in a way, sort of disrespecting. Because really they were disrespecting him for bringing that to him. He, he's in the midst of teaching the word. And they come to him. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me say this before I get too far. The lady had seen no, nobody's saying that she didn't sin or she committed adultery. She did. She, she sinned. So don't, don't, don't say the pastor said that oh, the lady didn't do nothing. She did something wrong. But they, too, did something wrong. Right. And so let's look at this text. Jesus basically ultimately says to the scribes and the Pharisees, look at the mirror. Look at yourself. And brothers and sisters, I want to give you four reasons why it's important for you to look in the mirror. For you to look at yourself. 
yourself. For you to look inward, not outward. And the first point I want to make is that you ought to look in the mirror because if you don't look in the mirror, you become self-righteous. Okay, let's, 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 let's unpack this thing. And so, and so, in verses 3 through 6, here it is. The scribes and the Pharisees brought to Jesus this woman caught in adultery. And, and the Bible said that they really emphasized this point. They caught her in the midst of adultery. And then they said to Jesus, listen now to Jesus. Teacher, we caught this woman in adultery and the law of Moses said that anybody caught in this and adultery should be stoned. And then they looked at it. Now what you going to do about it? And you see, these brothers' intentions were bad from the very beginning. Let, let, let me show you something. Let, let me show you. The first thing you see here is that the first thing they were trying to do, they were trying to embarrass this sister. Look, look what they did. They sent her in the midst of the crowd. They announced out loud what her sin was. And then they put some emphasis on that thing. So they said, we caught her in the very act. And, and, and if that wasn't enough, they announced what her punishment should be. They said, she should be stoned to death. And so, and, and you know, way, shape, form, or fashion were their intentions good for this sister. Their intentions was to embarrass her, to make her seem like less than a human being, make her seem like the worst person in the world. But, but, but really, that wasn't their ultimate objective. Their ultimate objective was, what was it? They were trying to trap Jesus. Listen, 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 listen. They bought her there. To embarrass her, and they did. And you know, I want you to just think about this. I'm, I'm gonna get to this point, but they brought this lady. We're gonna baby Jesus. Just want you to think about what they did. How, how much they tried to embarrass her. So they said, I, we call her in the very act. And after they caught her in the very act, they bought her to Jesus. Now, in order to bring her to Jesus from wherever she was, y'all hear me? And they really was, they were up to no good. So he, here she is caught in the very act. They bring her to Jesus at the temple. If they caught her in the very act, they had to drag her out of her bedroom, through the streets of Jerusalem, up the stairs to the temple and throw her right in the midst of all those people. Now, I don't know what kind of clothes she had on, but I'm going to tell you, if, if, if it's like what it sounds like, she may not have had on none. No, no. You, you listen. You know, seriously. So, so, so their intentions for this sister was absolutely no good. And they did all that to this sister in order to trap Jesus. Yeah. Listen, make no mistake about it. They did all that to trap Jesus, but understand this. Remember now who these folks were. They were the scribes and the Pharisees. Ah, mm. uh, I heard somebody. These are religious folks. These are church folks. That's why this message is important to us. Because these people were leaders of the word. But yet, they wanted to destroy Jesus so bad. And you know, I, I thought about this. Sometimes people want to get you so bad, they don't care who they hurt. That really wasn't, but, but, but that just makes sense. They wanted Jesus so bad that they, they, they did everything they could to embarrass this lady. And you know, as this sister 
was thrown up there. They really thought they had Jesus in a, in a pickle. Because they listen. Now if Jesus said to them, they said, now what are you going to do about it? If Jesus said, well, do nothing, you couldn't say that right because she had committed adultery. That's right. And, and, and then I think about that. He really couldn't say stone her, right? Because if he said stone her, remember, he got a packed house. He got a whole lot of people listening to his message. And so if he says stone her, what effect would that have on the multitude That's right. who he's teaching? See, they put him in a pretty bad position. But I like it when people do that. Because usually when people do that, guess what happens? It turns around on them. <laughs> see, 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 they tried to trap Jesus, but they made a major mistake. I had to do a study, but I figured it out. See, when they made this statement about the law and adultery, they left something out. They did. Let, 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 let me show you. See, so, 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 so the law that they quoted, it says, when a man commit adultery with another man's wife, uh -huh. both the man and, and the, woman. the woman should be stoned. That's right. That was the day fast. Now, there lies their mistake. Because where's the wrong? <laughs> Where are you at? Somebody missing. So something went wrong. They bring this sister for committing adultery, and this brother was right there with her, and he didn't know where to be found. And so, and so, and so, they wanted Jesus to stone this sister, but they broke the law in bringing the sister to Jesus. Uh -huh. Listen to me now. If the law says, if a person commits adultery with another man's wife, and, 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 and the law said that that brother and that sister should be stoned, they only bought the sister, then automatically that gets thrown out of court. All right. There's some evidence missing. All right. The, the, the boys, they, they, made, they made a terrible mistake because they believe if they just bought that sister up there, and in fact, there's another part of that. If, if Jesus would have made that decision, he really would have been overstepping his bounds. Because he really didn't have authority to enforce the law, the Roman law. And so, in many ways, they were trying to set him up. That's just some extra stuff. I'm just letting you know that that's, those are facts. But here we are with a sister and these religious folks trying to get her killed. But you know, I thought about it, brothers and sisters, we must be careful. We, we, we must be real careful by using the scripture to make ourselves better than somebody else. We, we, we need to be real careful by using the scripture to make ourselves more righteous than somebody else. Yeah, yeah, you know these people. Oh, yes, I the word said blah, blah, blah. But yet, they doing everything and anything that you could ever think of. But they see this person made one little mistake. And they get, oh, the word said, yes, 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 on them. But when in actuality, they themselves are doing wrong. And so I want you to make sure that we don't, and we're not guilty, of using the scripture to make ourselves more holy. You see, the Bible is not a book for us to shine the light on somebody else's fault. No, 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 no. It, it's a mirror for us to look at our own faults and correct them. Let me say that again, because I, I bet somebody missed it. It's not a light for you to take and shine down on everybody else to say, you, this is wrong about you, this is wrong about you, this is wrong about you. No, 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 no. It's a mirror. That you take that mirror and you look in there and you say, now, let me straighten myself out. What, 
what am I doing wrong? What, what do I need to get right? What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to stop saying? How do I need to stop acting? It's a miracle. And in here you find the way that you ought to be. Not point the finger at somebody else. Let the church say, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror because you need to see yourself. It all starts with you. So you look at your own shortcomings. You look at your own faults. You look at your own sins. And they're all right here. Don't take this and beat other people over the head. No, it's not for that. It's a reflection back to you. And you say, oh, yes. I'm wrong right there. Oh, I need to be better right there. I'm going to stop that right there. Because I see it in the mirror. This is your word. The word of God. And you know, as I carry past this point, I did have a pressing question I never did find the answer to it. I wanted to know how in the world did these brothers catch this lady in the very end? If y'all find the answer to that, let me know. I, I, I just, I mean, I'm curious. I, I don't know. I, I, I wondered about that. How did they catch her in the very end? I'm just trying to figure it out. Did they know her from somewhere? Did they hang out when she hung out? I don't know the answer. All we know is they said they caught her in the very act. And so I want to say to you, don't go around snooping, trying to dig up stuff on other people. Because to me, that's really the only way they could come up with that is because they have to be, like she said, peeping or snooping. So, brothers and sisters, let us not be guilty of snooping and peeping and trying to dig up stuff on other people. Let us spend our time looking in the mirror. My second point is this. It's important that you look in the mirror because... If you don't look in the mirror, you will forget about your own sin. Okay, so in verse 7, so, so, so when they kept asking Jesus, he, he tried to ignore them. You know how, and you know how when somebody just keeps messing with you and you say, so, I wish they just don't know. I wish they just leave me alone. I wish they just shut up. But they just keep talking. And so they just kept at Jesus, and Jesus said, okay. He said, now, since y'all want to know, he who is without sin, let him throw the first stone. You have to be able to self-reflect and understand that you have some sin yourself. In the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses three through five, Jesus taught us something. He says, now, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but you're not considering the plate that's in your eye? Now, I want you to get an image of that right there. Amen. This person has a little speck. All right. But, 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 but you, while you run out, because I'm not talking about you have something that's protruding out of your eye. Jesus said, now, why do you say to your brother, remove the speck from your eye, and you got something hanging <laughs> way down here out of your eye? And in the text he said, you hypocrite. He said, the first thing you need to do is remove that plank from your eye. But he said the reason you need to do that so you can see the speck in your brother's eye. In fact, because that plank is in your eye, you can't see, you just talking. You just falsely accusing somebody. Because there's so much sin in your eye, and in fact, 
I know this for a fact. Sin blinds people. Yeah. Have you ever seen somebody just do some sinful and evil things? Yeah. And you wonder, why are they doing that? Can't they see what they're doing? Can't they see how harmful that is? But the reason they can't see it, because sin has so blind them that they can't even tell that they're sinning. See, that's why Jesus said, now listen, before you start accusing somebody else, before you start talking about somebody else, you better look at your own sin. See, that's why the mirror is so important. And he says now, brothers, sisters, they only have a speck, and you got log in your eye. Leave them alone. Because we do know that the Bible says all have seen. Now, it didn't say some of y'all have seen. It said all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. And so that tells me that there's nobody who is without sin. And so if you don't look in the mirror, you mess around and miss yourself. Yeah, because if you got sin in your life, and you do, because the Bible says you do. And you know what? Uh, 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 you know you do. Even if the Bible didn't say you do. And so, you you, you must look in the mirror because if you don't look, you mess around and believe you are sinless. And so, and so, and so, it's so important. Before you accuse somebody else, before you pick up a stone to throw at somebody else, you better take a look at yourself. And so, and so it's important to look in the mirror. Because you'll forget about your own sin. Third point, I'm moving fast now. The third point is this. You want to make sure that you look in the mirror because there's more than one sin. Let me say that again because I know sometimes people say, well, I ain't did what they did. I ain't do this or they did that, but I don't do that. But there's still more than one sin. Have you ever heard this sin is sin? So they see it in the more sin than yours. You're still seeing it. And so you have to remember that there is more than just one sin. And I know we like to, we like to focus in on people's, other people's stuff. And the little stuff we're doing, we don't think it's important. But it's important. Yeah, it's just as important as what they're doing. And so here it is. I, I, I sort of use creativity in this one because here... In verse 8 and 9, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground. And, 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 and the scribes, the text in verse 9 says, the scribes and the Pharisees heard this, and they were convicted in their conscience. And they went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus and the woman was left alone. This is after he said, he without sin cast the first stone. Now, I, 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 I'm just using my sanctified imagination on this because, because, because nobody has been able to tell me what Jesus wrote on the ground. If it's anything like me, even if they could see it, they wouldn't know what it is. But so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to use my sanctified imagination and say when Jesus wrote on the ground, he wrote down some other sins. When, when Jesus wrote it, and they were all standing around with their stones in their hands. And so, and so, they were all ready to stone him. But when he wrote, whatever it was he wrote on the ground, and when he began to write, I'll say he was writing 
write down some of the sins. So he probably wrote down lying, and the liars dropped their stone. And Jesus probably wrote down stealing, and the thieves dropped their stone. He may have wrote down fornication, and the fornicators dropped their stone. I don't know what he wrote, but he could have wrote down lust, and the lusters dropped their stone. And he kept writing because a few of them were still there, and he could have wrote down gossip, and the gossipers dropped their stone. And he still looked up, and a few of them were still hanging out there, and so he, 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 he may have wrote down backbiting, and the backbiters dropped their stone. I don't know what he wrote, but it's two significant things happened. He wrote something, and he wrote it in the dirt. Now, you may not understand this, but he wrote it in the dirt, and I believe he wrote it in the dirt because all of us got some dirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus has made us where 